This is an upgrade to the video The Time Travellers of Rendlesham and the Earth Grid. It's a strange story, apparently revealed in parts to three people who have never met. Possibly this is deliberate, to rule out collaboration in a made-up story. One of them is Jim Penniston, a witness to a landed craft during the UFO sightings at Rendlesham in 1980. The second was Gloria Hazel of Staines. The third was myself. During the famous Rendlesham UFO incidents, one of the witnesses, Sergeant Jim Penniston, touched a landed craft and a series of ones and zeros appeared in his head and didn't stop till he had written them down in his notebook. Thirty years later, these were recognised as binary code and deciphered as a message in English giving longitude and latitude references to a number of ancient sites across the world and implying the senders were time travellers doing an exploration of humanity from the years 666 to 8100, 6,000 years in the future. It also implied that their origin was a mystery island off the coast of Ireland, which has appeared on several ancient maps, but which has never been able to be reached. The possibility that it is a submersible extraterrestrial base was considered. There seemed to be time anomalies during Jim Penniston's encounter, a sensation of time slowed and missing time, this could be caused by proximity to a time engine. In between the encounter and the deciphering were several other occurrences which seemed to have been found to be related. In March 1992, I was working as a resource assistant for TVEI, the Technical and Vocational Education Initiative, a local authority education project, and had been involved in setting up a weather satellite system at our unit in Chertsey linked to the Meteor sat satellite. I found a picture of the area of Britain and Ireland that had a white dot off the coast of Ireland that I thought could have been a UFO at the time, but looking at it recently was surprised to see it was in the position of the phantom island of High Brazil, Ireland's mystery island, as marked on a 14th century map. In 2003, I had emails from Gloria Hazel, in which she spoke of feelings that the area of Chertsey Abbey was particularly special, and that she had had similar feelings in the 1980s in Sedona, Arizona, and thought there might be a lay joining them. She had also had a UFO sighting in Chertsey about the same time, shining down beams of light as at Rendlesham. Plotting the points on a globe, I found a great circle between them would go through the area of the Great Pyramid in Egypt. In 2020, ten years after the deciphering, I saw a TV programme in the Ancient Aliens series about the Rendlesham occurrence and the message. Though I had heard of Rendlesham, I hadn't heard of the message before. I was astonished to find that Sedona and the Great Pyramid were two of the places mentioned in it, and that the line seemed to go through the position of High Brazil on the old map. I later found that one of the other places mentioned in the message, the Portara at the Temple of Apollo at Naxos, Greece, also seems to be on this line. In July 2004, I wrote an article for my magazine Amskaya about the famous UFO picture taken by Alex Birch at Mossborough, Sheffield in 1962, comparing it with three photographs I took in September 2003. This was the same year that I had received the emails from Gloria Hazel, but I didn't realise the possible connection at the time. This is the article. The well-known photograph of UFOs in Mossborough, Sheffield, is now claimed again as genuine by its photographer on his website, and states that other objects have been seen later. It generated high level and even royal interest at the time taken, then ten years later, Alex said it was a hoax. I never believed this because of a letter from Philip Rogers of Grindleford to Saucer Forum, the magazine I was then editing. He wrote, Since the sensational picture of flying saucers taken by 14-year-old Alex Birch in 1962, which received worldwide publicity, your readers may be interested in other sightings in that area which have come to my notice. Alex Birch, his family and friends have made several sightings since. One in November 1962 at night and another in March 1963. The former sighting was of a strange object in a field near the Birch's house. 
It was cigar shaped and about 25 feet long. Alex, his brother and mother saw this object and immediately afterwards Alex rushed to the phone to tell me of his experience. I took a tape recording of this spontaneous interview. In March 1963, my sister received an excited telephone call from Alex Birch Sr., the father of the now famous boy. Apparently, the youngster had seen a saucer at about 50 yards range, having a good view of its underside which shone with a blue light. Having his camera heady, handy, uh, with a colour film in it, he took a photograph. This was a great disappointment because the picture showed practically blank a fact which may have been due to radiation from the craft. Early this year, 1963, there have been many sightings from people in Mosborough, including one during a football match, so much so that the citizens of that Derbyshire mining village take, mine fl take flying saucers practically as a matter of course. One of the most significant sightings, however, occurred two years before Mosborough hit the saucer headlines. This was by two boys, one Jeff Green, aged about 11 years at the time. I was lucky enough to meet Jeff in the village recently and heard his story at first hand. He and his pal were playing on the waste ground near where the famous photograph was taken one night when they noticed a fiery circular object floating to earth and diminishing in size. As it landed, Jeff's friend touched it but withdrew his hand quickly saying, Keep away from it, it's hot! Then before their eyes the jelly-like object disintegrated into ashes and finally disappeared, leaving not a trace. Nobody in Mosborough, least of all Jeff Green himself, understood the significance of this experience, for the reader will no doubt be acquainted with Desmond Leslie's account in Flying Saucers Have Landed of a man claiming to have touched a jelly-like object which disintegrated before his eyes. He may also recall George Adamski's account in his book Inside the Spaceships of an explanation by the space people of how they harmlessly disintegrate remote controlled disks when they get out of control and land on Earth. End of Philip Rogers' letter. In September 2003, the same year that I had the email from Gloria Hazel about her sighting in Chertsey in the 1980s, I took three pictures from the top of the tower of Fort Belvedere near Sunningdale. This is a private Crown Estates property, which was a folly that became a royal residence. The Duke of Cumberland built it as a lavish summer house from the, from the roof of which seven counties can be seen. It was enlarged by George IV in 1828 and converted into the appearance of a fort. Edward VIII lived at Fort Belvedere from 1928 until his abdication in 1936 and his abdication broadcast was made from there. I had been given permission to visit the fort as the course of the Roman road from London to Silchester runs adjacent to it and as I was investigating this road as well as the branch road from Egham to Chertsey I wanted to see if any evidence of it was visible from the top of the tower. Unfortunately there was not. The view was far too wooded. But when I examined the photographs I had taken from the tower, I noticed that they seemed to show objects in the sky that I had not noticed through the viewfinder. They had certain similarities to the birch picture, seeming to have a bubble effect that was commented on by Tony Wedd in an issue of his magazine The Crow, in connection with the Mosborough picture. He thought that the small bubbles in the top saucer and the larger ones in the right-hand one represented the craft in various stages of disappearing, either becoming invisible or going into another dimension. This seems to be indicated in the pictures, which were all taken in quick succession. Could they have been time craft in the process of dematerialization? Being at the same time that I received Gloria's message, and during the Roman road investigation that seems to have been relevant to the significance of Chertsey Abbey in the scheme, it seems to suggest the pictures were given to me deliberately. <laughs>